Why do babies learn languages faster than adults? Stick around to the end of the video to find out. It is often claimed that meditation changes the brain. While this is true, it's somewhat misleading. In reality, everything that you do changes your brain. This phenomenon is known as neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is defined as the ability of neural networks to change through growth and reorganization. So when you practice sports, or play an instrument, or do just about anything for enough time, the brain actually changes itself to function differently than it did before. The brain achieves these changes via two different methods, functional plasticity and structural plasticity. Functional plasticity refers to the ability to move functions from a damaged area of the brain to other undamaged areas. Case studies of stroke victims who have experienced brain damage have shown that the brain can rewire itself, with neurons next to damaged brain sites taking over at least some of the functions that have been lost. When a person loses a limb, the brain must rewire itself to adjust to the loss of input from that limb. This process can take time and effort, but eventually, the brain is able to compensate for the loss of the limb by reallocating resources to other areas. However, some amputees experience pain in the part of the limb that's not even present anymore. This sensation is known as phantom limb syndrome. Experts believe phantom pain results from a mix-up in nervous system signals, specifically between the spinal cord and brain. This is an unfortunate condition and often is untreatable. Structural plasticity is a little different. It refers to the brain's ability to actually change its physical structure as a result of learning. Essentially, neurons that are used frequently develop stronger connections. Those that are rarely or never used eventually die. By developing new connections and pruning away the weaker ones, the brain can adapt to the changing environment. This process is thought to play a key role in the formation of memories. Synapses are the point of contact between neurons. Imagine them as the connectors of your brain, like the connectors of a motherboard in a computer. They can be strengthened or weakened, added or removed, depending on the signals that the brain receives. A specific example of structural plasticity is the process of long-term potentiation. This is a process in which the strength of a synapse between neurons is increased in response to repeated or prolonged activation. For example, imagine you are trying to learn a new song on the guitar. At first, the connections between the neurons that control your fingers and the neurons that process musical information are relatively weak. However, as you practice playing the song, these connections become stronger and stronger, allowing you to play the song more accurately. This is an example of long-term potentiation because the connections between the neurons that control your fingers and the neurons that process musical information have become stronger as a result of repeated or prolonged activation. Another example of structural plasticity is the process of neurogenesis which is the formation of new neurons in the brain. One example of neurogenesis is the formation of new neurons in the hippocampus, a region of the brain involved in learning and memory. Studies have shown that hippocampal neurogenesis is increased in response to certain types of learning, such as spatial navigation tasks. In other words, as an individual learns to navigate through a new environment, New neurons are formed in the hippocampus to help process and store the new information. Physical exercise has also been shown to increase neurogenesis, as well as promote the survival of new neurons, by triggering the release of specific growth factors and modulating signaling pathways. As I mentioned earlier, everything has the potential to change the structure of our brains. However, this does have some unfortunate outcomes. For example, maladaptive structural plasticity is also thought to be a contributing factor in the development and progression of a number of neurological and psychiatric conditions. When an individual abuses drugs like cocaine or heroin, 
These drugs activate specific neural pathways associated with reward and reinforcement. This leads to an increase in the strength of synapses in these pathways, a process called synaptic potentiation. With chronic drug use, the brain adapts to the presence of the drug and the synapses in the reward pathway become even stronger. As a result, normal pleasurable activities that would have previously activated the reward pathway, such as eating or socializing, are no longer able to produce the same level of pleasure. This leads the individual to seek out the drug to achieve the same level of pleasure and reinforces drug-seeking behavior. In this way, maladaptive structural plasticity can contribute to the development of addiction. The brain changes to the point that without the drug, its reward system is not able to function properly, leading to drug cravings and compulsive use. It's important to note that the brain is not infinitely malleable. Certain areas of the brain will not change, and always be responsible for certain actions. For example, there are specific areas of the brain that play critical roles in movement, language, speech, and cognition, whose functions remain largely unchanged. Overall, structural plasticity is like the brain's own personal construction crew. It's always working to build, strengthen, and remodel neural connections to improve the brain's functionality and adapt to the environment. Okay. As promised, I will answer the question posed at the start of the video. Why do babies learn languages faster than adults? The brain of a newborn baby is still very much in development. Newborns have around 2,500 synaptic connections. By the age of three, this number has grown to a whopping 15,000 synapses per neuron. To give you context, adult brains only have half of this amount. Why? Well, if you recall the concept of synaptic pruning that I mentioned earlier, it actually makes a lot of sense. Babies' brains are set up to absorb information from their unique environment. This is why they are born with so many connections. But, if these connections aren't used, they will weaken and disappear completely by the time we are adults. This is why there are so many bilingual babies. According to research, babies who learn two languages actually progress at the same rate as their peers who are only learning one language. <laughs> babies' brains are simply at an advantage because they have more neural connections than adults. Our brains have an amazing ability to change throughout the course of our lives, allowing us to learn new things or recover after sustaining an injury. In the end, who knows what more we will discover about the incredible biological computer that we call the brain.